A few weeks ago, I remember uh, I had a conversation with a group of people and we were talking about the new realities and the new vocabulary we have to develop to face the reality of trans people. For example, uh, how to use a neutral third person, uh, them, instead of he or she. And sometimes we're not always sure how to behave, what to do, and we were wondering who will make those decisions. And by the end of the conversation, we kind of acknowledged that probably in 10 years, it will be so normal that we won't notice it anymore. And all those little change will happen progressively without being noticed. I'm talking about this because um, the lectionary for this week in the First Testament is a text from the book of Isaiah. And I have to admit I'm biased about it because it's one of, I think it's one of the most interesting passage. The book of Isaiah is one of those very interesting books, one of the longest, if not the longest, in the Bible. I'm not sure I have a blank. I'm sorry about that. I should have read it, but I'm sorry. And most likely it's a collection of several writing that was put together. In chapter 43, where it's found, the passage is found, uh, we have the prophet that trying to give hope to his people. But it's not really easy because it most likely come from a time of exile. Uh, up to this point, uh, the Jews have their kingdom, and then the Babylonian came, took Jerusalem, destroyed everything, took the elites, sent them in exile. And then the prophet says, don't lose hope. And the people probably said, well, pff, are you crazy? The Babylonian came, destroyed everything. We're powerless. There's nothing we can do. There's, there's nothing to owe for. And then the prophet says that they are surely coming, says the Lord. Well, I will do new thing. Don't you perceive it yet? And it's very powerful words. Because sometimes, I don't know, in, your, in our personal life, I don't know about you, but me, uh, sometimes we're going through difficult times. It's, it's rough and we're feeling that nothing is going our ways and, and to the point we believe that we're surrounded by some kind of gloom, some kind of darkness. There's, and we're wondering, you know, is it going to end? Is, it, is there still a place for hope? And often change start to happen in our lives, but we don't perceive it yet. Because maybe we're too focused to look at all the negative around us that we don't see that something is emerging. Like spring, there's new buds that we not always see, that we don't always stop to look and notice. And sometimes those buds, those new change, there's new little something emerging is emerging in place that we expect the least. We thought that it's not possible, and yet new life is there. And the same can be said about our churches. Well, it's no secret. Christianity is the way as we knew it and know it is dying across North America. Churches are empty. The membership is getting older and older. And Many are wondering, you know, we're closing so many congregations, so many churches, is there still hope? And once again, changes are happening, but we're not perceiving it. There's a myriad of new initiatives that are not spectac often not spectacular, often not noticed. They go under the radar, but they're still there. And we our focus being so much on what is not working and what used to work and, and try to get back to what we used to have that we forget about all those little things that are happening 
in the places and the way sometimes we expect the least. And as, as I'm recording this, we're close to the end of our Lenten journey for this year. And we're waiting for Easter morning when everything was changed. That's the message of the first Easter morning. And maybe this time it's this text invite us to take a step back and maybe stop waiting for this one transformative uh, catharsis moment that will change everything and maybe try to look at what's already changing and all that is like a building block that is building the message of Easter. Maybe it's an invitation to look at all the sources of hope around us, to be open to surprises, to something that we thought was not even believable. So thank you once again for watching. Take care of yourself. And until next time, I remain the lectionary man, Reverend Stefan Vermette. Bye-bye.